So here I'm taking a, a single 42 inch diameter uh, tabletop with a radius or waterfall edge. I have two pieces of nice uh, burled walnut that I've seen together and I want to put this down in one piece. So after I uh, press just the flat So to achieve a waterfall edge on a, a round table, what I did is I radius the, the edge. So I only glued the flat portion down, didn't apply any glue to the round over. And now I will uh, trim the excess material. You want a minimal amount of material so you can do that compound um, forming of that edge. Oh, we probably want uh, an inch of material, excess material because this will just cause problems um, when I'm trying to roll it. So let's cut this off, flip this over, and get to our compound veneering. I then brushed on some type on original glue to the waterfall, to the radius edge of the table, which is MDF, and then also to the veneer. Let that dry, and now I can massage and work this on. Walnut veneer is real easy to sort of manipulate and compress, or in fact, any burl as opposed to a straight grained or flat cut uh, veneer. So if you're gonna try this sort of compound veneering, uh, start with any sort of burl. And in this case, I wet the edge just slightly, and I'm gonna sort of do this in two steps. I'm gonna do, this is sort of a waterfall edge that's kind of a French curve. It starts gradual, then drops off uh, to the vertical uh, plane. So I'm gonna sort of massage and first get that that long sort of gentle radius down first that will start wrinkling up the outside and the more excess material we have the more difficult it will be because it's sort of um, a larger uh, circumference that has to compress down so if, once you can kind of get a better idea of how long that veneer needs to be we'll cut that off and then we'll go ahead and we'll um, iron on uh, the vertical surface and that last little radius. So um, I've wet this a little bit because you're essentially steam bending. Um, in this piece of walnut burl, I could have used my uh, flattening conditioner. Uh, so check this other video out. Uh, so, um, and it is a little dry, so, but I felt pretty confident that this is a, gr a gradual radius and just with the use of water, will soften the fibers with an iron. It literally will sort of steam uh, the, the fibers and soften the lignum up, the resin that holds the fibers together, and I can compress uh, this down. Because essentially what you're doing is you're taking a larger circumference, because this has to be a little larger, and when you roll it over, it becomes a smaller, a smaller circumference. So the fibers don't have to stretch, they have to compress. Um, every veneer is different, every job is a little different. You'll get a sense of it. And even within this uh, one piece of veneer, you're gonna have some areas that work real nice and other areas, the grain is just gonna be a little wonky and a little more difficult. But I'm slowly wrapping this around, as you can see here. So you can see this area here that I'm um, working that area. I'm then going to um, cool this down with a heat sink. This is a actually a roofing detail roller, but the steel, will absorb the heat from this and help solidify the glue. One reason I like the Typon original glue for this technique is that the resolidification is only seven degrees. It, so if you can cool it down, it will grab and that will then hold. Um, this, you gotta be careful because putting this on will sort of dry this veneer and you're gonna hear it crack, but I'm not uh, too worried about that. I'm gonna work this area first with this little bit here and again roll this first edge down first I got that first one. Now I'm going to kind of just take this little radius and just try to roll this down to kind of get this to, to, to drop down. It doesn't have to be 100%, but 
But again, I'm gonna sort of massage this edge around working sections at a time. There's some cracking. See if I can drop this down vertical, which I can. And I have um, a lot of this sort of pleating that's starting to happen. And that we will compress those pleats out in the second step, or the third step actually. Some of this I can work all the way down. And I'm feeling pretty good about that. So I sort of want this to cool down, get that edge good. And now I have a lot of this excess material here, which is again, creating pleats and giving me a lot of resistance. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to cut some of that off from below. I'm just gonna take uh, an extended knife. I'm gonna support that from the, in from the outside and sort of score on the inside to cut this out. Is a little brittle so in this case I might even want to soften that up with a little water that might help resist some cracking so I'm gonna put my board on there kind of roll this edge around again take my knife and sort of score and cut that veneer from the underside There. So by cutting this off, that gets all that extra pleated material, so I won't be fighting. I still have these small pleats, but they will be very easy to, to iron down. In fact, I might be able to do that right here. And you're simply compressing those fibers down. You're not stretching. Oh, here's a good thing. I meant to do that. Got to be a little careful because this wood is fragile and you can tear it. So kind of push down a little too hard on there. So I'm going to iron it and kind of push it back up, re-solidifying that wood and then cooling that glue down so it re-solidifies and re-grabs. So that's sort of what we're doing here. I'm going to go ahead and do that all the way around the, the table. And after that, it would be very easy to sort of sand, and even on a crack like this, cracks like that pretty much disappear because in the burl you have so much swirling and things going on. Uh, and yes, it's not uncommon if you had an open crack or a piece that tore out and fell on the floor and you can't find it, you might have to go in and do some minor touch up with some putty or and some pigments, but. Um, if you get good at this, you can pretty much uh, get it in one shot.